All right, so you can see here, I've dug out this, this weld area here. I've dug it in a little bit. So I'm gonna do the same with that. And how I've been doing it is I'm using my uh, foreman very carefully. So I've mixed up some green stuff. You take this stuff and you cut equal parts and you mix it together. But you got to uh, cut away the center part because where they come in contact, it'll have some hard parts. So now that I've dug this little trench out here, I'm going to put some of this green stuff into that trench. All right. use water it reduces the stickiness of this stuff the green stuff all right in all honesty I don't know if it's really necessary to do this because there is the potential to make it look pretty ugly in some spots but you know so, what I want to do next So my process here is to just jam it in there 
and uh, scrape back the excess. I'm just using a wooden stir stick rather than anything metal because that might mark up the plastic. So yeah, I've already got the other side kind of done. And then now what I gotta do is make a tool to come in there and make some welding marks. All right, I'm using a piece of uh, plastic strip here just to help seat this stuff properly into the groove there. That actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let that set up a little bit before I come back and uh, work with it. All right, so what I've done is I've taken a piece of aluminum tubing, cut off a little strip, put it in this pin vise, So now I'm going to try and make a little tool here. Use some 600 grit sandpaper to take that burr off the edge. Okay, I think I need to adjust this. All right, I think I need a little bit of water. So I'm gonna take this brush
So yeah, there's two exhaust stacks that you can use, and I guess these are the ones for the early Africa versions.
All right. All right, what do we got going on next? Okay, these I have to hold off on because I'm gonna use some aftermarket for the periscopes. These lights I'm gonna put on after with Photo Etch. The tools I'll put on later with Photo Etch. Okay, so we can start with the turret. Okay, so let's get working on the turret. What parts do we need? Okay, E7, E10, E9, alright, so, we're going to clean up these. So I don't think I'm even going to bother with this gun part because no one's ever going to see it. Okay, so so I got to make sure I get that on the right side this time because I've been screwing up a bit lately. the top.
All right, let's uh, add some more of the uh, stuff that goes on the top here. So. So that goes to the rear. These are like pistol ports, what they call these. So if the guys inside were wanting to take pot shots at people outside without exposing themselves, they could do so. So I, I would suspect this one goes like that too. I don't know what it is about Tiger Tanks, but, uh, you know, when I was a kid, like, I'm talking like 11 years old or so, I wish I still had this little book I got on tanks. But it did have a nice picture of a Tiger Tank in it. And me and my buddies at that time, we would always be drawing cartoons, you know, like as you do in school. And we would draw Tiger Tanks and stuff. I used to read a really cool comic book back then too, called G.I. Combat. Like I feel sorry for people who have comic books now. They don't, they don't have the really good stuff anymore. It's so cheesy. But, uh, you know, there used to be a really, really good comic book that I used to like. And it had this one episode in it GI Combat, it had this thing called the Haunted Tank, you know, and uh, the artist that did that, what was his name, Joe Kerbert or something, I really loved his style, and uh, yeah, they don't make them like that anymore. At the beginning of the war in the desert. We were out searching for a lost tank belonging to our squadron when... Smoke on the horizon! It's coming from something! Let's get closer and see what from. It may be from Phil Smith's tank. If it's not, we've got to go back. We're out of water. Our steward got near enough for me to figure out what had happened. It's Phil's tank, all right. It's had it can't be anyone left breathing. No tank tracks around, so it must have been clobbered by an enemy plane. And then I spotted it. A single set of footprints staggering away from the tank. Looks like someone's got out alive. Let's follow it, Slim. As we clanked along the trail that stretched out in the broiling sands, I see something out there. It's a man. Pour it on, Slim. Let's catch that poor guy before he staggers deeper into enemy territory. Through my binoculars, I could make out... It's Phil, all right, and he looks like he's been through a meat grinder. We've got to get him fast before he's burned to a cinder under that furnace-like sun out there. But before we could get closer, I spotted something else. A familiar, ominous shape. Enemy tank coming in from the side. We've got to get it before it can snatch Phil away from us. But it outguns us. So head for that dune in between us, Slim, and pour it on. The first enemy tank shell already screeched over us. We'd better get that dune in front of us for cover or we'll be wearing a blanket of smoke and flames before that tank is through with us. Just as we scooted behind the sand dune, that second shell almost slammed us into a pile of junk, and we won't be able to stay here forever. That tank is going to come looking for us with fists loaded with TNT. Head out the other side. Maybe we can get one good shot at the enemy while they're playing games triggering out that we'll try to back out the same side we came in to fire at them. No use. They've got us out-guessed. 
They're blocking this side of the dune too. As the steward clanked in back to the dune again. They can pick Phil up while we're stalling around in the back of here. We've got to make a break for it. Slim, head straight up the dune itself. Go on, dig in those cleats and go. The treads ground and gnashed. And as the steward clawed its way up the dune, I'll give you the picture. We're going to take a shot down at the enemy tank from the top of the dune. So it's up to you, Rick. Before they catch wise of our sitting in the bleachers, go for the shot. We got to the top finally as they're tossing another shot at the side of the dune below while they're starting toward Phil to pick him up. This is the pitch, Rick, and it's all yours. Lower that barrel and fire. Rick zeroed in on that enemy tank and blasting away at point blank range. You scored, Rick, a clean shot that picks up all the marbles. And so another plume of smoke was added to the one made by Phil's tank. As long as Rick can get the enemy in his sights, those special armor-piercing shells we were issued will do the rest. Anyways, I, I gotta double check. How is this supposed to go? Right there, okay. That's all keyed. This one here, I don't know what that's about. Is that like a choice? I guess so. Maybe I need to look at my references for that. All right, you can see that that extra part is uh, armored cover installed. So yeah, you could either put this one on or this one, which is what I've got on there now. So there. It's a great book. I do have photo etch parts for the inside of this hatch. This is the loader's hatch, but I don't think I'm going to bother because I'm going to put these on just in case I change my mind and I want to have like a figure in there. But I think for the most part, I just want to have these hatches closed. So just a tiny, tiny bit of glue. I may pop that off at some point, but for now, I'm going to have that there.
So you have this little notch here. You have this thing. So you want to plug that in there. So I'm not even going to bother with the uh, periscopes at this time because again, I'm probably just going to have the hatches closed. According to David Bearden's Tiger Ausführung E Turret Bin information on his website at Tiger One Info, this Tamiya Tiger One kit has a bit of an issue with this uh, Rommel Kiest. He writes here the turret bins used on the Tigers of Schwer Panzer Abteilung 501 were 1400 millimeters wide. They slightly overlapped the pistol ports as you can see in this photo and he shows a picture. And so then underneath that he writes, the bin provided in the kit is not sufficiently wide. I think for my purposes, I'm not gonna sweat that for this build but you may wish to look into it. So I find these are pretty useful tools for putting a CA glue on. And the one I've been using, it's finally broke after a fairly long time. So I gotta put a new one in here. So yeah, you gotta fold it up, put it in. 
They're called loopers. So I'm gonna use that right now for these tracks I gotta put together. I get rid of these things. So that goes like that. So I'm going to use a really thin, super thin cyanacrylate. Like I've got about four different kinds of uh, CA just because you're going to need different ones for different jobs, right? So where's that little looper? I'm going to be very precise with this. Well, you can see how that works. Beautiful. So to clean the glue out, all you do is burn it.
All right, so here we have one of the luxuries of our industry known as a, a brass turned replacement barrel. Well, I don't know if this is brass, this looks more like aluminum, but parts of it are, are brass. Let's put this together and see what happens, shall we? Oh, but before I go on much further, I did happen to make a replacement with that mold that I made, but I think I made a boo-boo when I st was storing my uh, resin. And uh, yeah, I put it in the fridge, which apparently you're not supposed to do. I thought it would keep it longer, but in fact, it's sort of like broken down the properties. I only needed the one, I got it. So that's okay. I'll just have to go out and buy some some more resin. So that's about 50 bucks or more. But live and learn. Don't put your resin in the fridge. You're supposed to keep it at room temperature, apparently. Okay, so let's take a look at assembling this aftermarket barrel here. What I've got to do... Okay, so for the the uh, the muzzle, I guess is the term. Let's identify these parts here. So we need number one and number two, and that'll go onto here. So to center this, I'm going to put it on this file. So I'm just going to use super glue. Usually I solder, I solder my uh, brass parts, but in this case, I think we're okay with just using some super thin cyanacrylate because it's just flat surface against flat surface here. So, put the other piece on there. And I think these little castlings should line up. So there you go. That goes into the muzzle brake. So that's got to go down. Now let's come off. 
this is a very tight fit. I'm gonna pop that out and try again here. Let's see. So this side has a little bit of a bevel and this side is flat. And when I look at the uh, instructions, this looks like it's flat there. So, yeah, that's coming out now too. I guess I'll just have to glue that when it's in place. Well, I think it's seated in there, but I don't know if it's supposed to go down any further because it can't go down any further. It's seated as far as it can go, I believe. Let me look at a picture of a real one. So I've just got some Radio Shack solder here and some uh, soldering paste. That's been around for a while. <laughs> Also have this uh, tip tenner. Thing, uh, my thing, I have this uh, exhaust fan that sucks the fumes away because breathing in this uh, solder is not good for you. So I find the key to this is just to have lots of flux. The flux is what gets everything to stick nicely. The difficult thing here is making sure it's centered. Ow, 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 okay. So that looks pretty centered. All right, so let's try and see if we can get this other little piece. So these have all got to line up. What you can do to simplify this is just cut a little piece off. That's usually what I do. I'm, uh, I'm a little impatient right now because I haven't been soldering for a while. So we've got that. Now what I usually do, I take one of my shitty brushes and I take a little flux, brush it on. And the idea is you heat up the metal and the solder sucks up under the parts. So it doesn't look like it's absolutely perfectly centered. I'm gonna struggle with this until I get it centered. 
So let's see if this works. Hmm. All right, I think I'm at a place where I'm happy with what's going on there. So we'll take this little pen here, fiberglass pen, clean it up. Oh yeah, that looks pretty damn good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks pretty much centered. All right, yeah, it's way better to use solder than, than glue this photo etch. So, there we go. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm using wood to punch it down there because if I use something metal, it'll scratch it. That goes there. So there you go. All right, and then what will happen next is that goes like that. Wait. What the heck? Huh. All right, so there it is basically, I think. The instructions would have you somehow putting this over the end here like that. Like here, it's it it's somehow you're supposed to get it over that, but it doesn't go. But if you put it this way around and slide it on, slap that in there like that. You got this part to go on, and then this part, right? Somewhat like that. This also goes on the end here and uh, there you go Okay, so this goes first, and then so that goes on like that. Wow, that's so tight. Looks like that's at the top. I'm gonna go with that. Wait, there's that thing there. All right, let's get a little flux on there.
right then. Well, I tried soldering this, but there's just too much uh, mass to solder this part to this part. So we'll pass on that and just use some crazy glue. So we can glue that on there. I'll clean everything before I do that because the flux is a bit greasy. So, and that goes there like that. So we'll just use glue for that as well. Now, one thing I've discovered is that it doesn't mention it, but you have to cut, there's a little uh, thing in there. I don't know if you can see, but it's like a little half moon half circle and it's preventing me from getting because like if you look at this one from Pamiya it slides in there it's locked in there and if I I need to get rid of it because it's not able to go all the way down here you can see here you see it's got to come down it would have been nice to do that before so keep that in mind if you're going to put one of these barrels on just uh but you see, like I made a bit of a mess of this with the solder and it wasn't melting because of the mass and the heat wasn't getting hot enough. But you can clean it up because it's friggin' metal, right? It's not plastic. So you can just clean it up and try again. I love it. All right. I'm going to drop that in there. Oh, secured enough. trying to get this right here. So I've got some alcohol here. All right. So we'll just use a little of this uh, black rubberized glue.
Are you not entertained? I hope so. Anyways, we're going to wrap this one up. And I'll be back with another edition in this uh, Tamiya Tiger 1 build. Be sure to tune in for that one. But in the meantime, and in between time, that's another edition of Jet Scale Models. Y'all come back now. You hear? Mm -hmm.